Hello, this is Amber Jones, IUtah Data Manager and member of the IUtah Cyber Infrastructure Team. This is a continuation of our series on data publication for IUtah, and this tutorial focuses on data collection plans. As a reminder, the goal for data publication in IUtah is to increase the value of data sets and avoid information entropy. Data collection plans are the first step on the data publication timeline. The IUtah data policy states, that all data creation efforts with any funding from IUtah, be it salary, travel, sampling, equipment, must submit a brief plan to the Data Policy Committee prior to funding. You may be wondering, what is the importance of a data collection plan? Is this just an extra bit of red tape? But think about it this way. You would not embark on data collection without considering the papers that would be published as research products. Similarly, we need to think of datasets as research products with associated planning for their dissemination. The data collection plan also gives the CI team an indication of what type of data products to anticipate and alerts the policy committee of any conflicts. Data collection plans include identification of types of data to be collected or created, brief description of methods, data formats, and data products, timeline for data generation and expected publication, identification of who will have access to preliminary data, identification of limitations on access, and information on collaborators and co-authors. So how do you complete a data collection plan? There is a template which can be found and downloaded from the IUtah website. Under Data and Modeling and Data Policy and Publication, there's information on the data policy and data collection plans. And then here is the data collection plan Microsoft Word template. You can download it, and I have it here. To begin with, the template has entries for your name, your research effort, collaborators, the summary and purpose of the effort, method used for data collection, and the location and timing of data collection. It also requests identification of the parties responsible for data collection, as well as for completion of IUtah metadata. The next component of the template is a table into which data sets are entered. A data collection effort may generate multiple data sets, and an entry should be made for each data set generated by the effort. Note that all of the fields in the table are required and should be completed for all data sets. They are described here above the table, and I will go over each one. Each dataset gets a name and authorship. Note that this helps comply with the IUTA authorship policy. Each dataset should be identified with its associated data typology. You should be familiar with this from the IUTA data policy, and text is copied below the table for reference. The resulting data format field requests the file formats that will be used for final data products. As a side note, make consideration here for using file formats that are portable and reusable. For example, an Excel file requires specialized software, so a CSV file is preferred. Similarly, an SPSS file could be published, but a parallel CSV should be published for parties who are not SPSS users. In the data storage field, we're requesting a description of how the data will be stored and managed during collection. The timeframe field is very important. Here you specify the date, which can be approximate, for release and publication of the dataset. This is dependent on the type of dataset and whether it is a discrete or ongoing data collection effort. For most datasets, this time frame will be within one year of completion of data collection. Additional details can be found below the table. Access during collection. Here you specify whether there are any restrictions on access to the data during collection. This is particularly relevant for datasets that involve human subjects and are subject to Institutional Review Board. Access after completion. Here you specify whether there will be restrictions on access after the data are complete. Again, this is relevant for data sets subject to IRB restrictions. Anonymization particularly refers to data that involve IRB. If any anonymization of the data products is required before sharing, briefly describe how it will be done. There may be an entry in the table, for example, interview transcripts that cannot be released at all. Another entry in the table could be a version of the interviews with any identifying information removed. Yet another entry could be an objective summary of the interviews. Publication. Finally, 
This last field requests a yes or no as to whether the data will be shared or published via the IUTA publication system. It is rare that data would not, but if so, you need to provide a plan for making these data broadly available. After you complete the data collection plan, email it to me, amber.jones at usu.edu. I'll let you know if anything is incomplete, then it will be passed to a few members of the Data Policy Committee for review. Reviewers will be looking for a few particular criteria. Completeness. Is it clear what the data creation effort involves? Are the data products adequately described and assigned the correct typology? Curation. Has the data format and locations of data storage been considered for long-term data curation? Is this in accordance with the data policy? Distribution. Are the methods and timeframes adequate for broad distribution? Are they in accordance with the data policy? Potential problems. Are there any potential conflicts with authorship or access during or after collection? After review, your plan may be approved or you may be requested to make revisions. We ask that you complete these in a timely manner so that you can proceed toward data publication. Our next tutorials will focus on the data publication system and submission and publication of datasets.